Hello, and welcome everyone to a new Heroes of Mana Magic video. And this video is going to be all about Necropolis on Duel. And yes, I will go over the general strategy for Necropolis, what you should be doing in the early game and in the mid game. I'm going to be playing for a whole for two weeks of buying gameplay and uh, show you how to set up into a good winning position on Necropolis. So let's get right to it. We are going to be popping into a new game, single scenario, and we are going to be generating a game of duel. For the purposes of this, we will not need a timer because I have a lot to explain when it comes to Necropolis. It's not a very easy faction to play. However, if you follow these few steps, you too should be able to win uh, most of your Necro games, actually. It's a very solid strategy. It's been tested by the best players many times, and... Uh, it's not exactly that obvious, it's kind of obvious when you say it, but before it was like widely spread, uh, people weren't really doing it. So what I would recommend for most people playing Necropolis these days is to go for Galfran. Other notable options are going to be Isra and Vidamina, who get a uh, Necromancy specialty, which in the long term is going to be translating to quite a few more skeletons. However, this is supremely greedy of a decision to make, because um, if Necro gets to late game, they usually win anyway, so what you want to do is actually get your early game and mid game to be better, and Galfran does this really, really well. His mid game power spikes are some of the best power spikes that we have in the entire game. So yes, I will be demonstrating how to play Galfran here. We will be starting with the standard 10,000 gold. Necropolis, in terms of like comparison to the other faction, is about mid tier right now. So 10,000 gold is about exactly what you will get on average across many games. So we can pop right into a game. I will not be using any recess, I will be playing with literally whatever I'm going to be getting. Because I want this guy to be usable but in any game that you were to generate. So, let's pop right into the game and talk about what you want to do. Oh, by the way, for the starting bonuses, you usually want to go resource. Uh, Necropolis in the early game is a little bit resource heavy because you want to build plenty of mage guilds, you want to build Necro Amplifiers, uh, you want to triple build the estate, and all of that costs wood and ore. So getting more of it is just going to make your gameplay feel a little bit more comfortable. But if you're playing against like a really weak faction and you ended up trading a lot, then you could also go for gold. That's not exactly a big problem at all. I would not recommend Artifact in most situations on Necropolis. No, it would be nice to get a good one, but of course you can't guarantee it, so it may as well go for something consistent. So let's pop right into the game. So when it comes to Necropolis, there's basically like uh, a very simple strategy that you should go for. Um, you should be building up your skeleton stack as you go through the game, however, you should be relying on vampires, okay? Vampires are amazing units that can do very many fights for free. Like Utopias, you're gonna, you're gonna be able to like fly for the map using uh, vampires that will boost up your hero, and your boosted up hero will come back and build a huge stack of skeletons. So that is how it goes. You invest into uh, vampires, vampires build up your hero, your hero gets uh, an amazing amount of skeletons, and that tends to be like a really strong synergy for Necropolis. And then also Galfran's specialty is actually pretty good, because uh, you gain stats based on your level. And usually these stats are not very good, however the math ends up being that Galfran is actually one of the only heroes in the game that actually benefits a lot from their specialty. Um, the plus one speed is also like very nice, but the stats in the in the later stages of the game get really, really good. So, yeah. In any game on Necropolis, you usually want somewhat, but it's not really that important for you to go to the sawmill every single game, only if it's at least like somewhat convenient. Most of the games, you will be immediately building out the estate, buying out the vampires, and buying out the skeletons. The zombies are not really worth their gold, and they usually don't even... Um, I mean, yeah, and they also slow you down, so you really don't want them. Uh, we would be really happy with a gold mine that would be skeletons, or skeleton warriors would do as well. However, at this time, we get zombies. Zombies are okay. If you have a lot of gold, I would pick them up. But in most games, I would actually even reject the gold mine guard. And just, uh, yeah, save the gold for vampires and skeletons. Um, 
I'm actually gonna be ignoring the school magic level ups because this is an inconsistent way to get them. Like if you can level up into earth and air magics without having to go for the complex magic university, then you will gain a substantial boost, um, you know, just to your game. And in a regular game, I would actually pick up the earth magician, but uh, for the sake of this demonstration, I'm actually gonna be skipping uh, the super good level ups of earth and air. Um, in order to show you that you don't really need to get these good level ups in order to play a good game. Then, also in the bunker, we have the Heart of the Magi. Heart of the Magi reveals spots on the map. You're going to be having, well, like, one eye in your biome, one eye in the opponent's biome. This is, uh, we can see a little bit of our biome. We can see, like, a boss here near the road, uh, guarded by Magogs, you know. Like, decent little info. Then we can see the opponent's biome, we can see where his conflicts down is, maybe we can, you know, track him a little bit, get some info. Then we have a dungeon, side zone, and the side zones are mirrored, and then we see uh, that the desert is unknown, because we do not see a dwelling of any sort. So yeah, the Heart of the Magic is going to be like a very good way to gain some info about the map. So you usually want to pick it up, but you don't have to like go out of your way for it. I would say if you can do it within less than 400 moves used back and forth, then it's a good idea. Otherwise, I would usually skip it. It's not that important. Then, of course, we want to collect as much knowledge as we possibly can. Uh, the earlier, the better. In the Munker, you have to collect um, all the free scrolls. That will be TP, Fly, and Dimension Door. Uh, this is just based on the format. Now, yeah, I'm gonna be flying the gold mine too, as Necropolis, especially in the early stages, tends to be like pretty gold hungry. And it will also buy the town hall, as it will also generate like a moderate amount of gold. It's a very cheap investment to make, and of course, I don't really want to deploy zombies, so I have the spare gold in order to get this. So now we can just move out. I have 40 mana, and we are leaving the bunker on day three. This is a relatively good start. Could be worse, could be better. I also like the fact that I have some wood already, and so that will not be causing me as much of a headache. Then, as the Necropolis, it's gonna be really important to collect all three towns on week one. In some games, you will definitely not be able to do this consistently, and one of your towns will actually be like in a position that you can't really reach on week one, and that's okay. You don't have to go for all the free towns, I mean, you don't have to get all three towns of Necropolis. However, it's really nice if you're going to be able to. And of course we see our necropolis here in the corner, so we can just uh, use our dimension door, which we got the mana for um, from the magic well. Otherwise we would have had to walk around, it would have been slower, but of course using control spells is going to be like a very key part of playing in the Duelka game. So yes, um, currently the goal is to build up a vampire stack and build up the hero. Vampire is a little bit more important than the hero here in this case. So, and the way that we generate vampires is gonna be very simply through just building out the estates in all three necro towns. And if we can, it would be a very nice big benefit um, to get ourselves some. Um, excuse me. Yeah, so it would be a very big benefit to get ourselves some external vampire estate deal. But those uh, actually tend to be like very heavily guarded. And there's not many of them either, so. Uh, in most games, I would say that you usually cannot get one. Our girlfriend usually can break on week 2, even without it. Then, another really important thing to note is actually the fact that you need gems and crystals while playing this faction. Um, because, as you can see, the upgraded estate needs you to have 10 gems and 10 crystals for the sake of upgrading the vampire lords. And these resources are pretty hard to come by. Crystals you can usually get by just going to treasuries and bullying dwarves. That's always like a good thing to do, even if you don't need the crystal specifically. However, the gems tend to be like a bigger nuisance to get. You either want to trade them up, or if you can see like some gem piles, you kind of want to go for them. And we're going to be praying for six gems here. Of course, every pile is going to be three to six of that resource. Unless it's wood or ore, then it's five to ten. We got five. Um, yeah, I'm just wondering if I want to use the moons for the sake of the jump on, and I think I will actually skip this. Trading up one gem later into the game in order to upgrade the vampire lords is going to be not a problem. So we basically already covered our gem needs, almost. And that's going to be good enough. Most games you will find, like, some gem pile that you're going to be able to just take. Of course, we're going to be doing fights. We also kind of want experience, but cautiously. 
We don't want to level up into anything bad yet. Talisman of mana. Not preferred, but so be it. <clears throat> we would have liked gold or experience there instead. So yes, we are heading towards our uh, middle town. The middle town is always going to be Necropolis. The other Necropolis is going to be like somewhere, well, basically wherever. The important skills to um, get um, in any Dwalka game is going to be the four main skills that you want to get in every single game of Duel. The two most important are going to be Earth and Air Magics. Um, those are absolutely necessary. Uh, but fortunately for us, we have a Conflict Town always in our biome. And we can use that to buy out the Magic University and then buy out the Earth and Air Magics there. And that's why we want quite a bit of resource here. So I will pick up a little bit more wood. I foresee needing wood for the sake of quite a few things. Uh, one is going to be the Magic University. Two is going to be the Mage Guilds for the Necro Amplifiers. Uh, and three is going to be all the Estates Steel. And also I will even need to buy the Marketplaces to trade up the gem that I'm still missing. Now, yeah. I would like to search us, but I think that I might be able to reach my town this turn, so I'm going to try for it. Mm -hmm. Necrofies tend to be pretty easy, unless they're not. If you walk into something range, you're going to be bleeding quite a bit. But there's not really much that you can do about it, so you just accept it and move on. And yes, we do get to the main Necro Town. Of course, we want the Mage Leader first, as we want to be high in mana, and uh, so we're going to be able to do quite a few more things. So yes, we currently have day 5 with 3 Necro Towns. This is a little bit actually above average. Um, you would usually have 3 Towns by 1 on 5 if you are efficient with your moves. However, they won't necessarily be like all Necro Towns. However, from this position, we could actually just go and grab the Necro Town anyway. Even if we didn't have it right now. So that's like not a problem whatsoever. Um, it's a little bit hard, complicated to tell you where the Necro Towns will be exactly because the generations actually differ from one another. Um, so whether you spawn in the bottom left, uh, top left, top right, or bottom uh, right will actually influence where the towns will be. So, and I don't can't really go over every single case scenario. Not to mention some of them are actually unpredictable even. However, we do know that in this generation, the complex town should be in the bottom left. Sometimes that doesn't happen, but generally it's going to be the case. So as I said, I want this game to be like very consistent and repeatable. And um, in pursuit of that, I'm going to be going for the conflicts down here immediately to buy out the Schools of Magic, as that's the most consistent way to get them, guaranteed every single game. So that's where I will go. Into the conflicts down immediately to get the Schools of Magic. I will not buy out the Vampires here yet, because I want to have gold remaining over for other purposes as well. We are looking out for a Vampire Dwelling, and we also need some ore right now. Um, in order to buy out the school, both schools of magic from the conflicts down need a total of 11,000 gold, 5,000 for the university, 2,000 for the mage guild as a prerequisite, and then 15 wood and 15 ore as well, and then 4,000 gold for earth and air. So, we still don't have that, so the church chests are actually being invested into other things instead. And we are also missing ore. Fortunately for us, we see the store pit that we will be able to use. So I can gain more gold, we can go into the ore pit, and um, I will also show you like a very, very neat trick. You can use it basically in, on every single faction. If you end the turn on any sort of mine or in a town, you can always put away your slow army into the garrison. And what this will do, it will actually increase your maximum moon points uh, up to like a higher amount. Then when you, the new day starts, you will actually have more moves to use for that next turn. So, in this case, with the Skeletons, I would be having 1630 moves, and, but if I put the Skeletons away, I will have 1700 moves instead. It's not a big difference in this case, but sometimes it can actually give you like a very substantial amount of moves. So... Uh, I think I will buy out the Estate on this turn already, as I feel a lot more comfortable with my gold and stuff. And then we will probably use the Dimension Door here next turn in order to uh, try and access the Complex Town as soon as we possibly can. We already have a gold income of 3,000 gold, so it will tick up and let us buy out the Schools of Magic pretty soon. So we go over to the next turn, and we will go over... 
uh, back onto the road. And we needed that other Orpal to so I picked it up, of course. Uh, fast fights can be pretty annoying. For fast fights, you might even want to split skellies, but because I have vampires, I don't really want to do that. Instead, I will just try and secure myself to the best of my ability. Nice, they didn't hit the skellies here, so we can just hit them. They did hit the skellies some, but that's not exactly avoidable. So you see, um, worrying about levels is actually a pretty important thing as well, at least like to min-max your game. If I were to level up into um, level 6 right now, I would get the random choice between two skills. And that choice might actually be pretty bad, but if I get to Schools of Magic before I level up, I will actually be able to like level up into an existing School of Magic every time, and we will not be risking getting a bad skill onto our hero. So it's actually really important for us to not level up right now. It might seem a little bit counterintuitive, as we want a lot of levels to get those Schools of Magic up um, pretty soon, but also at the same time, we want to curate it to be as nice as it possibly can. So now we will go for Mage Gold here, recover our mana, and we do have the gold to buy the university here in the next turn. We are triple building vampires. Uh, we can also... I would like the Necro Amplifier, however it would delay our Schools of Magic here by a little bit. So we will not do that, and we can actually just buy out the Magic University a little bit later. So yes, we are doing two things, building up the vampire stack and building up the hero. When the hero is going to be ready to like uh, use control spells efficiently and he will have vampires to clean up the fights, then our efficiency is going to spike through the roof and we're going to be able to do a lot of good things. So yes, this was our week one, let's go into week two, where at the beginning of it we immediately buy out the magic university. Oh yeah, I got the 500 extra gold income, so actually I could have bought out the magic, I mean the amplifier. It will not really change much in this game, but uh, yeah. Just uh, find a bit of a mistake. So right now we want experience to level up these uh, as soon as we possibly can. The best objects to, do, to get experience from are going to be like 1. Treasure chest. They're really good to pick up and just get some XP immediately for free. And then 2 is going to be treasuries. Dwarves are slow, bulky creatures, meaning that they're pretty easy to kill, but they're also really rewarding to kill. From the treasury, we're going to be gaining quite a bit of gold. Um, quite a bit of experience, because you get one experience point for every HP worth of units that you kill. So killing high HP creatures like the Dwarves is actually going to be very good for our hero growth. And then of course we have the added benefit of us needing crystals, and you get crystals from the treasuries. So this treasury is going to be the perfect object for us. This one ends up being very small, and that is unfortunate. Uh, we could have done quite a bit of a bigger one already, and skeletons are actually really good at dealing uh, with dwarves. But it doesn't make much of a difference. We can just clean it up. We already get advanced earth, so we can now choose the town that we want to teleport into. That means we have the luxury of um, rallying our vampires if we want to. And if we see nothing better to do, then that might actually be like a good enough play for us. Mm, I'm just trying to think. The hill board can be like a nice little boost to a Necro gameplay too, by making you be able to upgrade the vampires without having to invest the 10 gems and crystals. However, then it makes like rallying the future vampires way harder to deal. So I tend to stray away from that option, unless I'm desperate for whatever reason. I also have gems over here. I mean crystals over here. I mean get what? Gems, yes. I might just want to rally up the vampires and sit on my main town, then get a little bit of crystal and go up to vampire laws immediately. Vampire laws are able to do most buying fights for free, like absolutely free. Or we could just have like a YOLO exploratory dimension door, and maybe we'll find something to do. I do tend to like those sort of uh, calls. Unfortunately, we didn't really find anything here quite yet. We found an estate, but a sweet deal. And week 2 states are quite a bit weaker than week 1 states. Then we have Hobgoblins, Treasury. Um, I guess we'll just do these. Do we have a good magic well? No, we do not. So this is basically going to be like not only the current turn, but also the next turn that we're investing into this little pocket. Mm, but that's okay. We can afford to be slow um, on the early phase here, as we're going to be getting like a big, big boss spikes. So yes. 
Emphasis on uh, doing whatever you need to upgrade vampires and whatever you need to gain levels. And that's exactly what we're trying to do here. Uh, funny enough, by the way, it seems like I wouldn't be able to get both of these objectives, because, you know, if I pick this up, I would need 141 moves to step here. But on any terrain, without any penalty, you can actually cheat the last step and uh, get it for... and get it for less. So, if I were to take the treasure first and then try to take the treasure chest, it wouldn't work. However, if I take the treasure chest here... for some experience, I will then actually still be able to step to the treasury. Um, the last step will not cost more than 100 moons, but only the last step. It's kind of like a bug, but it's by now a feature and everyone uses it, so... Yeah. Just a little bit of uh, extra info here. Wouldn't expect any, like, newer player to be using such strategies quite yet, but, uh, it's kind of nice to know that it exists. We got some knowledge, which is really good, we need that, and we also got the Air Magician. Now, Logistics and Scouting are the next two skills that I really want. However, I think that picking them up right now and delaying our Schools of Magic will actually be slow. We want these skills at Expert as soon as we possibly can get them up to Expert, so we're going to be working on exactly that. And I think that the next thing to do is going to be, yeah, the next best thing to do is going to be to build out a bunch of marketplaces. As we still need a little bit of gems, a little bit of crystal, and we will be able to, like, trade those up if we have enough marketplaces to work with. So, let's make sure that we do. Right now, I could just TP once, and that's it. So, basically, we'll just move somewhere, try to find something a little bit useful to do. Like these helping deers, giving me some experience and some, uh, a few extra skellies is going to be not bad. And we also find the church chest on the mercenary camp. Anything that gives permanent stats is going to be like really good uh, over the course of a dual game. As they really do add up. And pretty fast too. Mm, that's okay. Then yeah, we can get this and we get expert earth already. So now we need only one more level before... Uh, we can use the um, all the control spells at expert level, and we also got up to six knowledge. That's also really important. Six knowledge is the breaking point at which you can use Dimension Door twice and then still to be back, making you be able to take many objectives in a single turn. If you don't have six knowledge by the time that you're a school semantic or expert, you should be looking into any way to get some knowledge, whether that's going to be schools of magic, Colosseum of magic, maybe the library. Um, or maybe like some helmet on, on an arty that you see. Um, it's gonna be like, uh, pretty important. Now in this game, we have an unfortunate situation too. Um, you see, we're gonna be relying on vampire lords for many things, including the break. Like, we want the break for free by just vamping. Like, yeah, by just vamp abusing, um, whatever break we have. However, in this game, we get a bunch of non-vampable breaks. Shooters are gonna destroy your vampires before they get any, like, uh, sucking done. And uh, undead units are, of course, immune to sucking to you, and any non-loving units as well. So we will need to, like, look for a different break that will be doable for us. So this is gonna be, like, good for demonstration purposes. Anyway, by now, we can just scout out a little bit more, and um, we can get back into our main town here where I will very soon be able to upgrade the vampires and get that big pile spike that I was talking about all this time. Um, currently, I think that building up a few more marketplaces is going to be the best thing to do to get our trading ratios to a point that I can actually trade up some decent wood. So, let's do that. Pass the turn, and then... Can we afford vampires? It's okay to trade literally everything away... For the sake of getting Vampire Lords, because they are the core of how this faction even plays. And even like 14 Vampire Lords here can do most of anything for free. So yeah, we just go into like pretty much any fight and it's gonna be free. Of course, if I have some skeletons, then they will probably die. So here's another thing about the Acropolis. Um, this is basically like a side quest whenever you're gonna be playing Vampires, and that is to collect as many skeletons as you can and just stash them away for later. Because uh, vampires will not really get you through the later phases of the game at all. Like, uh, while they're immortal against the AI, any player can actually just use like one chain lightning and kill your entire stack, or hit them once with a high damage stack. So, you want skeletons for later stages of the game. 
We also really want to get this expert air up so we can use the second dimension die. And here we go. Now we have it. So we will just go for the last town in the biome. Now Necrel benefits a lot from having many towns. Um, the reason for that is very simple. Uh, because you can use your skeleton transformer to transfer any low tier meat into skeletons. And this is a very, very important and powerful ability. Um, like, in the early phases of the game, most of your skeletons will actually not be coming from necromancy, but it will be coming from the skeleton transformer. And this means quite a few things. First of all, I do not have enough uh, resources or gold to buy out the mage here, so that means that my next turn is actually going to be quite a bit weaker than it otherwise would be. But that's okay, we can afford that. Um, yes. So throughout the game, you should be amassing a huge amount of skeletons, and the way to do this uh, is going to be like a little bit varied, but there's going to be like three main concepts that you have to um, uh, be aware of. So first of all, it's going to be the Skeleton Transformer. Uh, you can buy this building and then it can tra transform any creature in the game into skeletons. Yes, even dragons can be transformed into skeletons if you click it twice. Okay, not that you want to do that. Um, so yeah, I can like buy out the goblins here, buy out the wolf raiders, and this will be a nice 26 skeletons for us. And then every town is going to be like the same. So anything that gives us growth uh, very cheaply for low tier units, such as the mess all over here, it will basically give us 8 skeleton, 8 skeletons per week. And if we build many of these buildings across many towns, then it will actually amass to being a pretty substantial amount of your skeleton gain. You also want to buy citadels later into the game to amass even more skeleton steel. And maybe sometimes even tier 3 creatures to be turned into skeleton steel. That's how strong they are, especially on Galfran. Then the second way that you'll be generating skeletons is of course through necromancy. By doing fights with lots of units and then you will gain some skeletons back from every fight. This is the classic that everyone is aware of, of course. And then the third way that you'll be generating skeletons is going to be dual specific. And that is going to be through boxes. Lorder boxes will immediately give you a pretty good boost in skeletons. Like I picked up 93 here on the last turn alone. While getting the other town. Then we can see another small box over here. The fight itself will give quite a few skeletons. And then we can also gain some from the box deal. So there's nothing more to do on this turn. So we're going to pass. It's pretty unfortunate that we were not able to recover our mana. So any fight with lots of just... Raw unit count is going to be very useful in terms of generating skeletons, such as the Imkesh. Unfortunately, this one is small, but in Imkesh, you can fight up to... I mean, yeah, you can fight hundreds of uh, imps, and uh, these imps will transfer into skeletons very well. From this one, we just got 14, though, because it was small, and we don't have the necro-efficiency boosting um, stuff yet. The way that you can boost your necromancy is going to be pretty varied. Now, offense is always going to be like a pretty good skill for any hero that's going to be hitting things, and we still have like open slots. So, what I mean by open slots is that I really, on this Galfran, want logistics and scouting. So, two slots are basically, in my mind, reserved for that. And then the two leftover skill slots are going to be, well, basically, it's going to be extras, you know? And you can use them for whatever you like. So this is where player taste comes in. Some people prefer fire magics on this pad because you can summon a bunch of fire elementals. Uh, lots of people prefer water magics. Offense is also like very good often. Some people even would pick wisdom here. Uh, the reason why you would pick wisdom is to have easier access to enemy dead. So enemy dead is available in this template and it's a real powerful spell. And in the bunker we have the Pandora's box. This Pandora's box contains tier three spells. We didn't pick it up because we didn't have wisdom, so from our perspective, this box would have been empty. But you could actually pick up basic wisdom and then pick up this box in order to gain very early enemy dead, which will let you res up your skeletons that die throughout the fight, making them easier to preserve and stack up. It's a very powerful thing to deal, uh, but it's one that I don't usually prefer to deal, as the vampires will be able to take utopias before long, and utopias will give you like earth dome. And the Earth Dome will just let you do... Um, I mean, yeah, we'll let you animate anyway without having to use up the skill slot. So usually I like my skill slot for offense or for water magic, something like that. So yeah, I'm understanding I can't really see anything better to do than just uh, farm up skeletons. So yes, now that our duel is complete, the next thing that you want to do is just wait till you can do the break. So in our case, because we didn't really get like a vampire state on week one, 
Uh, the moment that we'll be able to break is going to be at the beginning of week 3, when we can amass all our vampires uh, from the towns that grew in population. And then, yeah, it's going to be like a very simple process of just uh, finding a vampable break. There's very many break options, so even if you find a bunch of bad ones, there will be a good one somewhere out there for you. I haven't ever seen a game where that is not the case. So yeah, so right now what we're doing is we're getting experience to try to hunt for scouting and logistics. We're trying to get some stats, maybe like from the library or something, and we're trying to amass some skeleton steel because we have some time left over in the bottom gear, and that is the best and most efficient way to use that time, in my opinion. We have already generated up to 340 skeletons, and that is amazing. We can buy up a few more vampires here, too. We still have like 8 vampires in the other town, so we could go up to 24. And some breaks actually are doable on 24 vampires, but I would not recommend trying that. Because, um, possibly, as a new player, it's going to be like pretty hard to read exactly what is the absolute maximum biggest fight that you can do. It's not a very easy thing to, um, um yeah, to know. So right now, we're not really building out into much. We would like to get the Necro Amplifiers, but we don't have the wood for that right now. So we can actually just kind of relax and do our thing here. Currently, the thing that I would like the most is actually stats. Or boxes. This is a Lich Box. Lich Boxes are not great. The reason why I can tell it's a Lich Box is because it's got to buy an upgrade tier 7, and there's nothing around it to dilute the value. So the value of this boss is really, really high. And the highest value that you can get on a biome is tier 5 units. So clearly, this is tier 5 units, so it's liches. I don't know if it's liches or power liches, but it doesn't really matter. I don't really want either one of them. As uh, they produce a few amount of skellies. Any boss that we get, even if it's like, gonna be like, uh, not exactly skeletons, but if, let's say it's like Walking Dead. You get 70 Walking Dead, you turn them into 70 skellies. Profit. That's why we want many small boxes. Also, very notable, is the fact that we have a Vile of Flyblood in this biome. And HP RTs are actually really good on skeletons, because you amass a very huge quantity of them. That means that uh, giving them, like, um, flat HP is very, very valuable. So the skeletons will go from 6 HP to 8. Um, effectively uh, increasing their HP pool by, what, 33%? And yeah, if you get the other two RTs, they can go up to 10 HP. And yes, by that point you would have the Elixir of Life. And the Elixir of Life assembled does not do anything for undead units, but still super good for Necropolis. Then we see another small box that we can just deal. So yeah, we are exploring and just taking anything that our biome is going to be offering us. Sometimes it's going to be more, sometimes it's going to be less, but um, almost every single time it's going to be enough. 50 zombies. Now this is going to be 50 skeletons in our case, of course as we are playing Galfran, and we want that. Then we can also find some knowledge over here. Having more knowledge just makes the gameplay a lot more comfortable, so I do want this. Uh, we want the vampires to just be tanking everything, because they can just regenerate themselves back to full super easily. Um, so yes, trying to preserve Skellies to the best of my ability, I'm trying to take all of these objectives. And even non vamp will fight like the Ice Elementals here, gonna be like not that hard for us to deal. So yeah, we have the option of either doing this little Pegasi for the knowledge, or get some extra skellies. Um, I'm actually kind of comfortable with my knowledge right now, so I'm just going to go for the extra skeletons. By this point, we have some leftover mana from using control spells, so we can actually use it to lose less units here in this fight. Which is going to be very nice. Vampires don't vamp from these, but these are weak enough to the point that they will not really be an issue, even if I can't. Um, map myself back. Of that one skeleton. Didn't have to die. Minus 10, plus 15. Uh, so I'm, there could be a case made for keeping zombies uh, in case of an early Fenalka, because then your HP pool is going to be even higher. And HP pool matters a lot when it comes to early Fenalkas, but we will not really uh, worry ourselves with that right now. We still haven't leveled up into scouting or logistics, which is a little bit unfortunate, but we're going to be really likely rolling into them anyway. And the game is playable without these anyway, as well. The game would not really be playable without air and earth. So, we make some sacrifices. By this point, we have like a little bit leftover gold. We're going to be like using it to get some sculpting growth. We can buy up the 
uh, Skeleton Transformer. So you just click on this, you can just transfer any army that you want onto the other side and click the button, and you have skeletons. Uh, we already have like 450, which is a pretty respectable amount. And of course we could transform all the other army here too. So we will be buying out more Skeleton Transformers. Not because we want more Nerf Graves, by the way, and Skeleton Transformer is a prerequisite. And this town does not have a fort, so we can't really build out much here. The fort is way too expensive of an investment for now. Uh, so yeah, what can we do here still? I believe that next turn I'm gonna go over to Krag and get the um, Observatory. As the Observatory will let the, allow us to maybe find some more things to do. Alternatively, we could just do a boss, we could do like a Nag Bank. Uh, right now what we do is not really that important. Well, I mean... It doesn't really change much the exact objective that we do and we are also still looking around for a doable break and we still haven't found one so maybe we just want to go north and see no i don't think so so in a situation like this where you can see nothing like that appealing that you can immediately deal this is what i would recommend okay make sure to not go over the edge of the biome but just dd somewhere somewhere audacious and you will find something because you know every game of duel has like a specific amount of things in the map and uh if you if you don't see them just by default that means they're just in the fog of war so you may as well unlock that fog of war it's pretty good this fam this fight is not pampable so i just want to make it uh, so yeah I get this vampire stay. It's not really that important that we would have enough uh, vampires anyway at the beginning of the next week. However, it's still not a bad thing to do at all. And we just found our break. We are going to be doing the Thunderbirds at the beginning of the next week. Which are a little bit dangerous because they could Thunderstrike you and cause you some pain. But generally it's going to be rather easy. Then I'm pretty low on gold. I also want some experience, so... Medusa stores would be nice, but then I would be losing the unupgraded vampires very likely. So I'm just gonna audaciously jump again. And we have found the library, so now we know exactly what we're doing at the next turn. So that is nice. And we can also pick up this, uh, probably skeleton boss. I don't even mind if I lose the vampires here for the sake of this. But it seems like they don't want them. They want to try and fight off the vampire lords. And uh, they will not really be doing a good job at it at all. Yes, Logistics. So this is one of the two skills that we are looking for. Uh, we get that, and right now we can't really do both Coliseum D and the Pandora. I will choose the Pandora here in this case. Not necessarily the better call, but it's just like... It's my whim. We can also downgrade the skeleton so they fill in into the stack of the last one. Now, generally, you almost never want to upgrade the skeletons. However, in Galfrin's case, it's actually a little bit different. Because the... Um, the stat gain from the specialty is based on the base stats of the skeletons. Gaining them more base stats actually makes Galfrand's specialty a lot better. So before the final fight, you do want to upgrade your skeleton stack. However, before the before you even see the opponent, before you even like um, you know like are meeting him at all, I would recommend just having base skeletons as they are going to be like way easier to manage. Because if you have like two different skeleton stacks, you need to animate two different stacks, and it's just like a whole world of pain. Just stick with normal skeletons until the very end of the game. That is going to be the best for you. And yeah, we want the library to pan out our stats, and we are going to be waiting for the next um, income of vampires. Oh wait, this fight is actually... A little bit tougher, so I'm just gonna pick up some meat here. Like these guys have 25 HP, they're pretty cheap, so they will do a good job tanking up these. Um... Yeah, they will do a good job tanking up those uh, ice elementals so I can take the library without much pain at all. Also, just wanna kill these so they don't kill off our one stack, so now I can just keep the, the other three stacks with our vampires. Yeah, you generally just send the vampires in and uh, keep the other army back. We have 80 more skeletons. That's beautiful. Oh. Actually, kind of missed the deed here. I wonder if I can still take the treasury and the library, as I meant to initially. 
Um, 612, 500. Yeah, I believe I can. Oh, Chain Lightning Scroll. Chain Lightning is the best offensive spell in the entire game. Getting it just like this from a scroll randomly is actually pretty cool. But not important. We are actually okay losing like a few vampires here. We do not want to use any more spells as we need 12 mana points in order to get back into a town by the end of the turn. And yes, we can cover up all of them so they cannot shoot, and now we can just beat them down. The skeletons here are doing a good job helping us. Um, and now we can just start the next turn, um, sitting in one of the other towns, as this will let me uh, pick up the vampires a little bit easier. So yeah, beginning week 3, we just take all the vampires, and then this is the pile spike that we were waiting for. Um, at this moment, we're going to be able to do almost anything. And the first thing that, we'll go, that we're going to be doing is we are going to be breaking. So yes, we just uh, get into the new week. I'll buy out the vampires. I picked up the skulls here too. Uh, but maybe I shouldn't because we need to use up all the gold in order to get uh, the vampire stack ready. Uh, 38 is actually good enough to do most of everything. And then we can actually trade away some of our gold and... Re I mean, yeah, trade up for some gold in order to get even more. So right now, this is a beautiful start of week 3. We already have like a pretty well-developed girlfriend with respectable stats. Uh, with pretty good skills, and and we are both, uh, yeah, we can farm stuff easily with Vampire Lords, and when we need to go for the Fenalka, we have the big H people of the Skeletons to fall back upon. This is a great ball stack that we're going to be able to develop even more as we go. And now we're just going to go for the doable break. So, actually we could just do the Vimons instead as well. That's an option. That would be a little bit safer. Uh, we're going to be going for the less safe option. This is not what I would do in a regular game, but I just want to showcase the power of the Vampire. So, generally, you just want to shield up and just want to sit in the corner. Unless we get, like, morale bolted out of the game, then we should be fine. This is why I said it's risky. Like, most of the time, like, 90% of the time or more, we do it safely. But there is a shot that the Thunderbirds can burst past us. The Vibrance, for example, could never do it. And we now get Scouting. So now the skill tree is basically complete. No matter what you have in the last skill, this is already going to be like perfect for you throughout the game. Um, notable options for the last skill, uh, for the last skill is going to be... Uh, what do we have here? We, the Plumsy or Water Magic are going to be like the two best options, in my opinion. And then Wisdom would be fine. Um, tactics, usually not preferred. Yeah, so now that we have uh, access to middle, we have like some movement points left over. We could actually use it for the sake of taking the Utopia. Utopia should be safe on the current setup. Alternatively, we could actually scout into the desert deal. You know what I'll do? I want to level up into scouting logistics, so I'll just do another break. Yes, Necro is probably one of the only factions that can just farm early breaks for the sake of experience. It's pretty silly. Experience will let us level up logistics, which will let us move more, level up scouting, so we can actually pick our objectives, like, even better. And yeah, everything becomes super easy. Uh, yeah, I guess we can just take something like this. Why not? Permanence is a great part to you for the long term, making you mean to dispel. That means if you get a bunch of buffs, you're gonna be, well, not losing them for free or anything. Speculum is a really cheap and good buy in most games, but right now I'm really poor, as my treasuries ended up being very few and very small. Um, in most games, I feel like I would be richer here on Acropolis, but not in this game, and that's okay. So now we'll go back to Solium, and we will wait a turn. And now we will be able to pick up one of the desert towns very easily, as it's uh, just a process of leading into the desert. And picking up the town. I want scouting right now. And yeah. Now any memorable fight will be immediately free for us to deal. Such as Utopias or maybe big Relic Guards. We can just like head over into the middle immediately. And dominate this game. 
And we also have uh, skeletons to fall back upon, of course. We could pick up a goose here, gain some really good gold income and such. So what you would do from this stage of the game is just like amass more skeletons and uh, the skeletons will carry your game perfectly. Um, and the best way to also use uh, vampire lords is to farm utopias. Utopias are super great. You gain uh, lots of gold, you gain um, great artifacts and that is, um, yeah, just beautiful. Um, let me show you how utopias are done. We can just, uh, yeah, head into one. It's a little bit of an annoying access point, but that's fine. Doesn't really matter what the guard is, even if it's not vampable. We have enough vampires, and our hero's strong enough to actually do this. At least in a volume. This wouldn't be the case in the desert. In the desert, we'd have to be quite a bit more cautious about the kind of fights that we would be taking. So, on their terrain, you want to be placing your, uh, your vampires on slot 6. And in this case, not all the dragons can immediately attack you, giving you like a little bit more breathing room for the sake of doing this. And this is uh, almost a max utopia, actually. It's uh, tier 3 out of tier 4s, out of 4 tiers. So you just want to go towards the corner and you want to shield up. If it was dangerous, I could also stone skin as well, giving me even more room to breathe. We want this for logistics, so we move more, and now we have an insane amount of stats. And yeah, this is just how you play Necro. We can, right now I can, just for the sake of demonstration, just uh, show you what kind of army we would be having right now too. Uh, we can buy out all of the army from all of the towns. This is something that you should regularly do. Just go through all the towns and pick up all of the meat. And then turn them into skeletons. Some beautiful, beautiful skeletons. You would go here and you would do the big sack. Just get the vampires out. You get the rest of the meat in, and click the button, and you get even more skeletons. There's gonna be like more boxes for skeletons and a buy-in. There's gonna be more skeletons from necromancy. They will grow in towns that you can transfer, and you will have beautiful, beautiful thousands of skeletons throughout the game. Really good hero, and the vampire lords will be able to carry any fight for you outside. When you get enemy dead from any earth town, which is usually pretty easy to find, you can even do like unvampable fights, such as the dreadnoughts here, super easily. And yeah, from this from this stage of the game, it should be a easy, easy, clean win up and up against most opponents. It's a very simple strategy, but very, very effective. This vampire, you see, because uh, the lore is that we always used to either play vampires or play skeletons. We never really like mix and match like that much. But then there were some innovators that you know saw that hey, we can kind of do both, and it works out really, really fine. They actually make up for each other's weaknesses instead of being like opportunity cost, uh, investing into, you know, like where you feel like you're investing into neither. So, yeah. Good luck in your duel games, good luck in your girlfriend games, and I will be seeing you tomorrow with the next guides. Ciao, ciao!